Welcome to Dadaab, Kenya, home to three refugee camps commonly referred to as the largest refugee camp complex in the world. According to the United Nations, over 440,000 people have fled to Dadaab, an attempt to escape famine, drought, and armed conflict plaguing the Horn of Africa. Approximately 1,000 to 1,500 new refugees arrive daily, putting a strain on the already overcrowded camp, which was built 20 years ago for a capacity of only 90,000. The situation in Dadaab is complex. New refugees arrive after walking days or even weeks in severe health through a scorching hot, thorny desert. Many come with nothing more than their family members and the clothes they are wearing. However, other refugees are more settled. Some have lived there years, even decades. Walk through this dusty market where vendors hawk everything from jerry cans and brightly patterned sarongs to sacks of flour, and the complexity of life here is summed up in one dirt street intersection. On one corner, under flowing blue mosquito nets, dozens of mothers cradle toddlers too weak to hold their heads up, as volunteer doctors at a free clinic desperately try to find more beds to accommodate more children arriving severely malnourished. Across the corner, Goats and donkeys shuffle past one of the busiest market stalls, Sunny's Electronics, where men in neatly pressed shirts sell cell phones and cell phone minutes. As families carry their sick relatives to the clinic, teenagers complete homework assignments and chat through their Facebook accounts at an internet cafe next door. An internews team set out to understand the complexity of Dadaab in August of 2011 by surveying residents about their access to information, media, and their communication needs. They trained nine local youths currently living in each of the three camps to conduct surveys in their communities using smartphones equipped with questionnaires in both Somali and English. My name is Farah Mohammed. I'm 23 years old and I fled from Kismayo, Somalia. Those interviewed were selected at random and asked about which media sources they have access to, like to use, and can trust for information. What about what a profession? What a profession? Yeah. I also need information about what a profession. So you need more information about it? We asked them what information they need and what media would they prefer to learn news and information from. Do you have information you need to make your daily decisions? I have. I have some information about this, but I need more. But you need more? Yeah, I need more. You know, being in a refugee is a hard life. You know what I realized it when I was carrying out the survey in the camp? The majority of the refugees, they say that they don't get the adequate information or the information they can rely on. So they need to get information that they can rely on. You might go to a far place to get information. You might go to another place to listen with some colleagues. Then when you come back, for almost after 30 minutes, you have been told the information we traveled for to here was not a reliable one. They are very angry and very annoyed. Survey results confirm that these frustrations are widespread. Over 60% of newly arrived refugees surveyed said they don't have information on how to access health care, with enormous need for food and shelter information as well. Even among long-term residents, nearly 40% say they can't get information about shelter. You know, some of them might say, uh, mm -hmm. we have some information, but we need more information. Mm -hmm. But the majority says, we have a little bit, but we need more, more information. This innovative survey was designed as a pilot program by Internews in collaboration with Star FM, the Norwegian Refugee Council, Erin Radio Ergo, and IMS. Internews chose to conduct this survey using smartphones as part of a program that utilizes technology to improve upon traditional, slower information assessment methods and gather precise information about the needs of residents as timely and efficiently as possible. Internews, along with partners, are working to build a local radio station and provide tools and training to help bridge current communication gaps into DAB. Once this survey method is perfected, it will be a valuable tool to help humanitarian agencies and beneficiary populations communicate more efficiently. This is Meredith Kohut reporting for Internews from Dadaab, Kenya. Uh, you don't have any information about yes, it? Yes, I don't have information. You don't have any information about it and you need more information about yes. it? Yes. Uh,